Hey guys, Meteor Rattles, Chris Tomer here. Let's talk some mountain weather. Our first stop is Keystone Ski Resort in Colorado. Opening day today. Look at that view. People up there skiing. Uh, the view all the way down into uh, Dillon and the Gores, the 10 mile range. Beautiful stuff out there. We're in for a pretty dry stretch here in Colorado until we get to about uh, a week from now. Then we may bring in some light snow. But um, let me just take you over to my uh, my bullet points here. For this update. So I'm looking at two atmospheric river surges for the Pacific Northwest, BC, and the northern tier of states. A lot of this is going to miss Colorado, especially initially, um, but definitely going to see some pretty big totals in some spots. Uh, three storm systems associated with this flow, this rich flow coming out of the Pacific. There are going to be some high snow levels in the Pacific Northwest, certainly initially, and then some of those levels will gradually fall. But I'm still looking at the Tetons. We could be looking at some decent totals there in the Tetons with the flow out of the West-Northwest favoring that uh, that range and that profile. So I'll look at uh, some, for some of the numbers and, and the jet flow for the Tetons um, coming up here in a second. Let's go back here, and I want to show you what... The satellite, uh, this is the infrared, or not the, uh, this is the water vapor satellite, so you're looking at moisture in the atmosphere here. Oranges and reds are drier air aloft, where the whites and the blues represent your moisture. So big area of low pressure right here. You can see another low kind of spinning behind it. Now, this is the flow. This, this is the developing um, atmospheric river flow slamming right into the Pacific Northwest and B.C., and it is rich and it's it, this whole package all of this these this storm track all this moisture is going to be focused into the pacific northwest in the form of about uh, two distinct surges let me show you the forecast for that so the latest uh, integrated vapor transport forecast and you can see two very distinct surges here so uh, one in, in late today into the second so that's happening another one coming the third into the fourth both of those are moderate to slightly even strong in in atmospheric river intensity um, and then there's kind of a weak trailing uh, influence from the atmospheric river on five six into early seven so really two primary distinct surges uh, with this uh, flow pattern. Let me just show you what this is going to look like. I've got a specialty chart in here today. This is precipitable water in the atmosphere. Um, and, and I'm looking at the, the entire North Pacific. So you've got the United States just off to the edge right there. And then you're looking way back into the Pacific beyond Hawaii. And the rich, the fetch of moisture is rich. So like a dragon's breath of, of moisture. Look at it reaching that green conveyor belt with even some yellows and reds mixed in all the way back into the very far west Pacific. So this is a pretty rich feed. Not the biggest one we've ever seen, but uh, a pretty decent start to this fall season with this really being our first atmospheric river um, set up so far. Let me show you what the jet's going to look like during this time frame. So here's 11-2. You can see it's really establishing itself and it's reaching out there. There's an area of low pressure that it's helping to, that's guiding in here. And, and the jet's really your conveyor belt for, for the moisture in the storm systems. And you can see in the orientation. By the time we get into about 11, let me take into 11-5. 11-5, now this is a powerful orientation with the jet stream. Um, this would be bringing in the next storm system, um, riding that jet streak right there just off the coast and also um, bringing in the next plume of moisture um, into 4-5. So that's the way this plays out. The jet's a big part of it, and we're seeing two distinct surges of atmospheric river moisture, so all of the things being packaged together, um, hitting the, uh, the west coast. Let me show you what um, the forecast radar and satellite is going to look like, so you can get an idea. Okay. Here we go in time. So there's the first storm system coming in tonight, tomorrow morning, hitting the Pacific Northwest. Lots of rain, very high snow levels. And there it is by the time we get into the afternoon. Evening snow cur curling down across the Tetons in perfect alignment. And that moves on. Breaking the action, 11-4. But by the uh, evening hours of 11-4, the next storm hits the Pacific Northwest. Again, high snow levels, but they'll be coming down. And then that storm begins to target with that west-northwest flow um, into the Tetons. And there's a, the fifth at 5.45 in the morning. Let me move ahead in time. Still snowing there on Sunday in the afternoon in the Tetons. 
And then here comes the third storm system hitting the Pacific Northwest with slightly lower snow levels on this one. You can see there's more blue up there, Mount Baker down towards uh, Stevens Pass. Um, certainly a little more so on Whistler and Blackholm. Uh, and then watch what happens with this one on the last frame. It targets the Tetons as well. So we've got three storm systems. There are going to have some targeting ability with horror graphics into the Tetons um, and, and fair amount of moisture coming out of the Pacific. We call this sort of an overrun into the interior, uh, but that's what we're going to see. Let's talk about uh, snowfall amounts here. We'll do this in two phases. So 11.1 to 11.5, the remainder of today through the 5th, about a foot in the Tetons, which is uh, outstanding to see. Whistler at the very highest of elevations will get snow. Snow three to six inches up there for most of the Banff area at the higher elevations, phase one. Everything's sort of rotating around that. There's a high pressure across the uh, southwest. Um, so here's phase two. This is 11.6 through 11.9, roughly another foot for the Tetons. So, I mean, the potential is there for one to two feet and the Tetons throughout this period with three storm systems, AR contribution. Um, and some of that does flow down into the, uh, into the Wasatch and also into the central and northern mountains of Colorado. But um, right now it's been very tough to uh, pinpoint how much. Um, in fact, the trend is for a little bit less at this point in those in the Wasatch and in Colorado. But, you know, all it takes is a slight deviation with the jet. Um, to really push some of those ore graphics further south. So we'll see. Uh, in Idaho, it finally cools down enough to get some snow there. And the second period's definitely better for Montana. It's going to be colder. That'll help to squeeze out about half a foot of snow. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this update. Always appreciate it. Take care.